A very warm welcome to the K-Scope podcast. I hope you're well. My name is Billy Reeves. On the 6th of May, No Sound release a new album. Their first one for a while. It's called Afterthoughts. We'll be hearing from drummer Chris Maitland, once a porcupine tree of course, and from the band's creative fulcrum, Giancarlo Era too. But first up though, here's No Sound with I Miss the Ground. That is it well without a clay I enjoyed life calling that name I thought you meant it was there to stay But now you are forcing me album afterthought that i miss the ground that track is free from the mini site kscopemusic.com slash no sound free when you sign up 
for the mailing list. Now, Jean Color Era has been writing material for Afterthoughts over the past couple of years or so. And during this process, there's been some recruitment. A former Porcupine Tree and Blackfield drummer Chris Maitland agreed to add his unique drum patterns to the album. So I caught up with Chris recently on his way to Theatreland. He's London's West End's go-to drummer at the moment. Uh, to ask him what he thinks he's brought to the new No Sound. A lot of dynamism, space, ambience, um, some beauty, good chords, <laughs> nice scapes, and hopefully um, some clarity in uh, the recording of um, my drums. Working with Giancarlo has been very uh, therapeutic in that way. There was some space for me to lend my style. Uh, he would welcome my instinctive input, which you know, came out of the improvisation. Mm. I suppose that means it's more like a band because there's more creative input at the point well, of... Well, more talking um, to each other as well. Sometimes you get solo artists who operate more like a band, and uh, often it's the other way around, where you think you're in a band and actually you're working for one writer. But uh, John Carter's very open and easy mm. to work with, and so there's scope there for some creativity. But really, in terms of getting the recording done, irrespective of whether mm. that was be considered to be a, a, a band or a group or just a project really. Do you feel as though, as I do, is it, would you agree with me, and I feel as though what you've done is given this some real oomph, you know. Uh, well, that's nice of you to say. I, 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 the ups are much more up now. Oh, well, yeah. that's yeah. good. I, it's funny, you know, because I don't tend to think that I need to do something or not to the music. Mm. It's just a reaction. Mm. I've always wanted to be as dynamic as possible. I think any drummer feels his job might be uh, to kick some butt at some stage. <laughs> yeah. Especially with those kind of like half-time things, because that you know that can be quite dull doing that. Mm. Um, that kind of Pink Floyd, I guess, is yes, the, yeah, the route yeah. that when you do on Facebook, Joy Division, mm. and that is something that you can therefore work around and give mm. some you know give some backbeats in interesting places yeah. and give it some groove. I thought that was really fascinating. Well, yeah, I, th- I would say that musically, anyway, the, the more that um, it doesn't necessarily have to start with it, but if the music does start with a sense of half time or even a half half, even a sort mm. of quarter, to time, you can always subdivide yeah. in order to make the music in inverted commas faster. But of course, mm. it isn't, is it? It's just busier. Yeah. But I think every drummer rudimentarily will um, know that, that that's the ge- the gear changes are in order mm. to make the thing seem more frantic. Yeah, and not also, and the also music to, have, to have things coming at you, you're not mm. expecting as well. I think by reversing. You know, mm-hmm. back beats and hi hat, the hi hat yeah. beats, and I thought that was really fascinating. Is that something again that you were okay? This is this is a passage that, you know, Chris. What are we going to do here? How mm-hmm. are we going to liven this up? Is that your job? Yeah, I, uh, yes. Although I, um, you know, there was a framework because um, John Carly would. Uh, there would be drums on the demos. It wasn't like I was oh, sent right, a demo okay. with, oh, with right. devoid of drums. Right. This would be, um, as it's often the case now, mm-hmm. because the people have got the gadgetry to be able to to put down a suggestion of what they want. So I'd have to know the particular pieces that you like in order to own up and say, actually, that wasn't my (laughs) idea at all. Well, I guess guess I'm giving you both credit. Yeah, OK. By avoiding the clichés. Because I think that's what Giancarlo's music does. You know, it does kind of like take a swerve. Is music a form of art or is it a form of show business? It's definitely art, isn't it? And it's just been used as a a sense of platform for show, for show business. I think back to the, the period where I got into rock music was definitely glam. A lot of glam was really good. I mean, there's, there's different echelons of that. There's, I, I was a bit later than the kind of Roxy music. I, I got in with the, the, the thumping glam, the, the Slade, the, the Sweet, all this kind of stuff. And, and pop music has always had good chords in it, you know, because it just hit, hits you straight away. They've got to, you've got to get it yeah. going, and that's the thing I prefer about it. In the sense that, you know, it's got to, you've got to, it's got to deliver in three minutes. Mm. You can't wait till the second movement before you're going to be yeah. um, crying your eyes out, you know. Yeah. Um, Seven Seas of Rye by Queen. Yeah, there's art and show business yes. combined. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are you doing, apart from, obviously... Banging away on Giancarlo's new LP. What are you up to? Oh, well, I have a kind of a nine to five equivalent. Of course, it isn't. It's, a, it's an evening job rather than right. a day job. I'm now the drummer on the West End musical Rock of Ages. Oh, fantastic! Um, right. Which is which theatre is that? That's now at the Garrick Theatre. Garrick, right? It's the only musical in the West End that 
actually requires and welcomes double bass drum playing. Oh, right. Um, I seem to remember when I was playing for Mamma Mia, the musical supervisor was always enjoyed my stuffing of double bass drums into the show, but he said, you know, it wasn't really appropriate for Abba. There's room for it. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, there was double pedal in that oh, um, right. situation. But this is um, Deppable. Uh, so that's the whole idea. Job. Union rights. Yeah, well, and, and, and above that, um, because none of us would do it otherwise. Walking away, but I needed the burn and the sun of my heart again. But the prize was too high, and that fury too wild. Just missing a place where days were not passing by And these tears you are now showing me All the wolves that you didn't see The only reason I walked away was for you to not hear what I said I wish it would on her again So much strain I can barely stand If we only could wipe the phrases we said Forgiving ourselves and laughing again
No Sound. That's called Wherever You Are. You'll find the video for that track at the mini site. So, of course, recently I've been over to the east of England to speak with Giancarlo Era. Um, Giancarlo, thank you so much for uh, the tea, uh, most importantly. Um, and thanks for inviting me in. Um, congratulations on the album. Is this the best album you've made? Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, I think there are several reasons, probably. First of all, it's just probably a natural process. You know, when you go on writing music, producing music, you just, um, well, you just make your skills or better, mm-hmm. technical skills. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you also know yourself better. Mm-hmm. And for me, knowing myself better means, most of all, I feel that I'm uh, finding more and more the way to focus on the core of the ideas mm-hmm. instead of maybe I don't know being self-indulgent or you know going around okay. yeah. um, and another big change obviously well two big changes first of all the presence of Chris Mayhem on drums mm-hmm. and that added a new color and anyway the change of lineup this time you know in these last three years new new energies new ideas mm-hmm. and now everyone involved in the band I feel that they are all with me keeping the music more fresh and more than a one-man thing. And with Chris, to be honest, you know, I think he's most of all, first of all, an artist, even probably before yeah. being a drummer. Yeah. Because he's really... The, the songs he likes the most on the album are the songs without drums. Oh, right. Okay. So he was really dragged to the album by the chords and sequences more yeah. than by drums. So he really put the drums... Uh, at the service of the music, mm. that is really the approach I like. There's a Giancarlo paradox. The Giancarlo I know is a is a happy soul, is a jolly soul, is good company, is warm and Italian. Yeah. Okay. But the music is glacial, icy, moody, and gloomy. Why is there a, an, an apparent difference between your character and your music? I, when, when I feel happy, I'm not inspired by the music. This okay. is be probably be the same reason why I listen to music. I never listen to happy music. I just don't respond emotionally. Okay. You know, music cannot make me feel happy if it is happy. It makes me feel happy because it moves me, and usually moves me for the more gloomy or or or, 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 or sad nostalgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that music is my way. Uh, it's kind of a cathartic thing for me you know mm-hmm. putting stuff in music is a way to on a side to take it out of myself you know okay. when I write something in music is the only place where I can talk with myself when I can admit oh, right. with okay. myself I'm very for me it's very hard to admit problems when I talk with that, see that's else. a very English thing that's whist okay <laughs> that's very English that sounds very wistful and most of all you know the thing or probably the first I like the, the thing I like the most about music it is that and on the other side, it always strikes me how with music you can make something that for you was, I don't know, making you feel um, the moody or sad, mm. and you can transform it in something that is beautiful. Um, what's the plans for the immediate future then to get the album a little bit better known? Like, is there going to be any gigs? What are the immediate plans for the, for the band, for the individuals in the band? Because obviously you've got some are in Italy, some are in the West End, yeah, some yeah. are in Norwich. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are plans for promoting it obviously live. Uh, at the moment, there is nothing yet decided. So you yeah, on, on, on stage, what I love on stage is that mm-hmm. this music really it becomes more dynamic and more powerful. And obviously, from mm-hmm. from all the players, there is the freedom to play. So you know yeah. that makes it quite. I would not say quite. It, it is at the same time quite different, but it recalls mm-hmm. with the sounds very precisely what is on the album and also you'll hear the material change as well yes would you like to do that though would you I mean here you are sort of as you we've all been saying about Chris and obviously the other members of the group it's very exciting that there's now this kind of like new no sound gang would you like do you see it as, would yeah. you like to go out in a tour yeah, yeah we just did, exactly yeah we just did one in Rome and it was in January and it was probably one of the most enjoying gigs we ever had right. everyone you know even people that were that are following us since 10 years in Rome since we started okay. just they were all surprised by the amount of energy that we just yeah. put in it so it is something that I want obviously to repeat the flow of consciousness goes away with a compromise for each endless hope destroy the man who moves from the one to rise Always looked only into me, or I 
horizons away from here A foolish illusion feeding itself Of something better and nothing to dwell I was always the solution of my fate Da vicino a casa di infanzia che non percorrerò più Un libro nella mia stanza che non abbiano più C'è una voce che non potrò più ascoltare Una frase mai detta che non potrò più dedicare Sono persone che non potrò far tornare in luoghi in cui non potrò più camminare Ci sono amici che non potrò più abbracciare Sensazioni che vorrò sempre ricercare Sono occhi che 
potrò solo ricordare cose che potrò solamente immaginare c'è una porta che ho chiuso per sempre senza neanche pensare c'erano cose dietro che non potrò mai ricordare no sound Paralyzed Afterthoughts, the album, available as a double vinyl LP and as a two-disc set, featuring a stereo mix of the album, plus 5.1 surround, high-resolution, 24-bit, 96 kilohertz mixes, kscopemusic.com as ever for details. And more information on the album, along with a free MP3 of the track I Miss the Ground, can be found at kscopemusic.com slash no sound. Right, to finish with then... Bruce Sword from The Pineapple Thief with Jonas Renkser from Catatonia, an album which comes out on the 3rd of June 2013, Wisdom of Crowds, an exciting new project uh, for K-Scope. We'll be speaking to Bruce about this for the next K-Scope podcast. Out on the 3rd of June 2013 and as a special digibook edition from the K-Scope store, with special mirrored foil covers. This track, Frozen North, is available to download for free when you sign up to the K-Scope mailing list. My name is Billy Reeves, and I'll speak to you on the next K-Scope podcast. Ta-da! Look, look at the way it turns The wind Nothing will make you learn See the snow on its lonely ride Watch gently they all collide Touch Place your hands on the frozen ground Caress the eyes of this cold, cold land Feel, there's nothing to feel anymore Turn us to the core Turn it back to me Turn it back to you Moving it back and forth Stuck in the frozen north Stuck in the frozen north